right, guys, welcome back to the Water Fighting Secrets Tactical Podcast. Today, we are joined by Pastor Paul Bigley. For those of you who don't already know or follow Pastor Bigley's work, Pastor Paul Bigley is a fourth generational preacher and um, a well, well known leading expert in eschatology, which is the study of biblical prophecy regarding end times. And we are absolutely thrilled to have Pastor Paul on today. Pastor Paul has written a number of books, um, over six to be exact. He hosts a weekly televangelical show and um, is just so much more than that. I've got his resume literally right here and it's pages and pages. But in order to maximize our time with Pastor Bigley today, I'm just going to say, sir, welcome on to the podcast. Thanks for coming on. Thank, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be on and glad to be with you. So, Pastor Paul, I want to jump right into it with you today because we are living in some really interesting times. Um, I have been studying biblical prophecy for a little while now, but I figured I'd have you on because, again, you really have become uh, at the forefront of Bible prophecy, of spreading the message about, you know, the times that we are currently living through. Um, now, when it comes to biblical prophecy, sir, could you give us kind of a short and sweet rundown of what the message is that we're talking about here as far as the book of Revelations, end times prophecy, things like this? Yeah, of course. Well, you know, when you take a look at Revelation, of course, it's going to be a spiritual uh, testimony. It's, the Bible says that uh, prophecy is the spirit, the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. The prophecy or the, the book of Revelation, the book of the apocalypse, is the revelation of Christ and his return and the events that are going to happen on the earth prior to it and even after. Okay. And it's quite significant when you look at where we're at today, we can actually see events taking place right off the pages of the book of Revelation. The formation, uh, the laying of the groundwork of a new world order or a one world government, a beast kingdom, a one world currency, a one world leader with his sidekick, a false prophet. And uh, you can see this is working right now, right before our very eyes. We're watching events taking place and, and also in technology because the technology is actually catching up with the prophecy, okay? So some of the things we saw in prophecy, like the mark of the beast, or how are you going to see the two witnesses all over the world see the two witnesses raised from the dead? Well, there had to be advancements in technology to even pull that off, and it has happened. So we're here. I mean, so there's a lot of things now going to start happening at a very quick pace. You mentioned the fact that everything's going to start happening at a quick pace, and this is always kind of the way that I may have imagined things happening, is that once it starts kicking off, boom, it really starts kicking off at full bore. Now, we're looking right now um, towards Israel pretty heavily, and we see, again, you talk about the covenant of many uh, quite a bit, and I believe that's in the book of Daniel. And um, we're talking about, you know, look, UAE, now we're looking at Bahrain, and probably Saudi Arabia shortly to follow after that if things go well. Um, what do you expect to see as far as um, this covenant of many? I believe around those same verses, it talks about once you see something with peace and safety, peace and security, sudden destruction will come after that. Yeah, really it does. And, and this is quite an unbelievable. But today, as they were signing these uh, two covenants, uh, the UAE and Bahrain, both signing a covenant with Israel at the White House with President Donald Trump. Quite an extraordinary moment. As they were signing, 12 rockets were fired out of the Gaza Strip uh, and by Hamas, and they landed in two cities there in southern Israel, in Ashkelon and in Ashdod. Both of those cities are biblical cities, and uh, six Israelis were injured. This was absolutely simultaneously happening as Benjamin Netanyahu was signing the peace documents. Now, what this means is, even though there are many nations coming on board to work out a peace deal with Israel, there's still the radical faction like Hamas, uh, Iran, Hezbollah that's in southern Lebanon, 
um, ISIS, the Islamic Jihad, and a bunch more. They're still all, at, in their mind, at war with Israel because they're what's called Shiite Muslims, which are more of a radical, apocalyptic group. And the Sunni Muslims are more of a peace-loving people that want to just get along. So, yeah, we're going to, when you see, the Bible says, when you see, when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction cometh, it's amazing that that's happening as they were signing today, but that's just the beginning, really. Now, when we talk about the, um, the Antichrist and the building of the Third Temple, and for my viewers who aren't really too astute on that stuff, I don't blame you, there's a lot to it, but basically, um, the prophecy is that there will be a third temple built, if I'm correct, Pastor Paul, and that that will eventually lead to a seven-year kind of agreement between Israel and other nations? Yeah, there's two ways to look at it. Some people think that the signing of this covenant with many will kick off a seven-year period, uh, which will include the building of the third temple. Hmm. That's one going to be cut with, and that seems to be happening because now we have five nations who have signed or two today and we had three last week those weren't formal signings but they were electronically signed and there'll probably be some formal signings coming after that serbia kosovo and an african west african country called mali um or maui i should it's got a w in there i'm sorry anyway we got five nations that have done this there's going to be more that are going to sign on, like you said, Saudi Arabia, probably, and, and no doubt, and, and several more. At some point, the Arabic nations will agree to let Israel rebuild that third temple. So I, who knows? Maybe there's got to be 15 countries on board, or maybe 20. But at some point, they're going to, the, the Arab world is going to say, you know what, go ahead. Build your temple. You can pray in your temple. We'll pray in our mosque. The Christians can walk around up there amazed by it all and look after, look for Jesus, whatever they want to do. But let's all get along, okay? So that's so. At some point, they're going to build it. Now, I have met with several leading rabbis in Israel, and I've been there ten times, and I've met with a lot of leading politicians and and the rabbis. They are going to. They've already rebuilt the temple, as I should say. They've already pre-built the te temple. They've got it in storage. And they can build the temple in six months if they want to. They can pull it out in sections and start putting it together. So at some point, they're going to get the okay to build. Once they do, then there's going to be a good three and a half years of peace. And then the Antichrist, according to the Bible, walks into the temple of God before the worshipers of God and declares he's God. So exactly what kicks off, you know, the, the seven years? When you see the temple going up, here's the bottom line. When you see a crane over there and they're bringing in parts and they're laying the foundation for the temple, uh, I'm going to say, you know, you, you're, you're definitely coming into this seven year period and uh, things are, are rapidly, and I'm telling you, we're, we're rapidly approaching this, rapidly. Now, we look at um, the book of Ezekiel 38, 39, and um, we see this Gog-Magog war, which is between Israel and many other nations. Um, is this supposed to take place before or after all of this happens? With the third uh, you know, I really think it takes place after the signing of several nations. It was, it was sort of like a take on this one, okay? Uh, a lot of theologians and a lot of eschatologists couldn't quite agree or disagree one way or the other whether which would come first would there be the massive Gog and Magog war and then a peace treaty between many nations and Israel or would there be peace hmm. and then the attack on Israel I think it you know it's real <laughs> I'm gonna say that it might be that it looks like now maybe the peace gets signed first yeah. since they're signing it now and they're starting to move and I'm going to say that if President Trump wins the election, and I think he will, and say if he wins the election, uh, even though even if he wins, there will be turmoil in America, okay? Because the left is so uh, so angry. They want to bring about socialism or, or communism. Mm -hmm. But anyway, if President Trump wins the election, 
he will really move this process along with many nations getting on board. So if he loses, then it's possible that uh, President Biden will slow the whole thing down because he wasn't for this. He was, you know, Obama administration, it was before Trump, they did a, they did a, signed a nuclear deal with Iran, which is the arch enemies of Israel. And Iran was in the process of building nuclear uh, weaponry. And then Trump wins the election and shuts that down. So this is gonna be huge. This election here in the United States is gonna be huge on which way this thing goes. But I'm gonna say the peace gets signed first before Gog and Magog, but it, it's gonna come right in behind it. It really is, it, it's coming. We also see um, a reference to Mystery Babylon. Um, and so allegedly now America or this Mystery Babylon, which you know I don't know, maybe you could tell us if you think that America is Mystery Babylon, but this nation, Mystery Babylon is no more before really all of this kicks off, if I'm correct. You're, you're correct, and it's not America, at least in my opinion. Okay. Um, um, Amer the, several reasons, even though that is a uh, that is an eschatology view. Uh, some of the guys I know personally believe that, and we sit at the table and drink coffee and disagree. Um, the reason is because there is Babylon from the Middle East is actually more it was a, when the kingdom of babylon was was made up of many nations that kingdom was huge sort of like the roman empire just like the british empire mm. and this mystery babylon is going to be in my opinion maybe a collection of a few nations like iran um, part of iraq part of syria maybe part of turkey i don't know um but it's going to be that area that's going to rise up. So it's more, it's more of the radical religion than it really is a nation. And I don't believe America is Mystery Babylon at all. Uh, actually, I believe uh, America is one of the nations that stays right in there with Israel all the way to the end hmm. and stands along with Israel as well as other nations. But um, so, I'm, uh, you know, that's my view because I think the America is too much of a Christian nation to just completely turn its back yeah. on Israel. Um, and I don't see America going away, disappearing. I just, I just don't see it, but I could be wrong, but I, that's my opinion. Well, I like that opinion and I'm really hoping that, you know, we get four more years and everything so that we don't go away. I, I hope that, you know, things go well for us. Um, now, I did want to bring this up as far as the Gog Magog thing, and um, maybe you can help me to clarify. So, as I understand it, um, Persia, Kush, Put, Tabul, these nations would represent modern day Iran, Turkey, Libya, Russia, and Ethiopia. Am I correct in saying that? So, we you saw. You are exactly right. Awesome. Awesome. So, we saw Ethiopia recently kind of going head to head with Egypt, and um, I was thinking, hey, maybe this is putting e um, Ethiopia a little bit more on the map as far as that whole Gog Magog thing goes. Do you think that we're gonna be tracking Ethiopia for them to kind of rise up more towards the forefront of the world stage before things start really happening with this? Yeah, I do. And, it, and the reason is the Nile River that runs out of Ethiopia, and you know, Ethiopia built this dam and that's the mouth of the river. So what they wanna do is they wanna capture uh, the lion's share, if you will, of the water and just let the rest of it, they, they want to keep 80% of the water and they want to let about 20% trickle on into Egypt. Egypt's not going to let this happen. And that could be the reason that Egypt would go to war with Ethiopia mm -hmm. over water. And uh, that brings e Ethiopia into the play. Now, Libya is the other nation that since they got, their government's been overthrown, the Yemen, um, has been a problem. You got a guy, you got Gen, the General Haftar mm -hmm. who's risen up there in Libya and he's trying to take over Libya, but Turkey's Erdogan wants to take over Libya. So look for Libya and Ethiopia to both play a role 
and kind of the spoilers, okay, because Iran, Turkey, Russia are certainly going to lock arms, mm -hmm. and they already have, and they will be marching on Israel at some point, and then Ethiopia and uh, Libya will also join, and maybe some other nations, and Egypt will have will fight against Ethiopia. This water thing's huge, so yeah. you're right. Um, yeah, it's it's amazing how these countries. I never thought Turkey, even though I read this scripture since I was a kid, I kept thinking, how does Turkey get in this when they're part of NATO? Right. But we see it today. They're here. We here we go, and they're they're doing it. So prophecies coming to coming to pass right before our eyes. It really is. You know, I was just in Turkey in Istanbul a few months ago, um, before, right before the pandemic hit, and I went to the Ayd Sophia, the uh, big mosque there. Well, now it's a mosque. But before yeah. it was a church, and you saw Erdogan say, no, 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 now it's a mosque. I really think that that was a very important uh, turning point. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm glad to hear you were there. So you went there, and it is a church. It was a Bezanine church, I believe, uh, from, <laughs> what, I don't know, 1,500 years ago or something like that? Long time. I mean, how he can just turn one of the world-renowned churches into a mosque is mind-boggling. That's not supposed. That's actually against international law. You know, there's an international law that says that even if countries change hands, the religious sites need to be left alone, hmm. and according to the United Nations. But Erdogan doesn't seem to care. So you were in Turkey. I think that's really cool. You were there, and now you can't go back to that mosque because uh, it's a mosque. Yeah. Unless you want to. Right. No, it's uh, it's the type of thing where it's just crazy to see how Erdogan is uh, doing what he's doing. And then now, funny enough, you know, Byzantine with the church, they're at odds with Greece right now pretty heavily. So it really, yeah. Turkey's at the forefront of, um, I think, what we should be watching. And then obviously Russia. Where do you think China fits in with all of this? China will, well, China fits in Bible prophecy because the, the 200 million man army okay. toward Israel. And they're, really, they're the only nation that could put together 200 million man army. They actually have 200 million men already enlisted. So huh. they can do it. So there's, there's where China. And, you know, China also is a communist, atheistic nation yeah. that hates God and it persecutes the Christians. And so when the Bible talks a lot of times about the red dragon, now that's references really to Lucifer, but isn't it quite extraordinary to think that uh, China is also known as the red dragon. So yeah, China will, will also get in this. Israel is gonna be taking on everybody. And, um, and America, I believe is the eagle in Revelation 12, the eagle's wings that fly over Israel to protect her. Hmm. That would be the United States trying to protect Israel's airspace as nations are trying to invade. So China will definitely get involved in this. Yes. Um, now, real quick, we talk about the mark of the beast a lot, and I really think that China maybe has something to do with that. Can you talk to us just briefly about the mark of the beast and what we should be looking for here as far as that is concerned? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. Uh, you know, the mark of the beast is getting ever so close. Um, in America here where we have to wear a mask, you can't buy or sell without wearing a mask. And that's one letter away from you can't buy or sell without the mark, okay? It's you just replace the R with, a, with an S. Um, what's quite extraordinary is the technology now to implement the mark of the beast is, is definitely here, it could be done without question worldwide. I think you're gonna see facial recognition used for social score. They're doing it in China, mm -hmm. social credit score, they call it. Same thing's gonna happen globally when there's a world order, a new world order, uh, the mark of the beast, because the Bible talks about horns with the name blasphemy, and the little horn is the Antichrist who rises up. Now, you can read that in the book of Daniel, chapter, I think, 7 or 8, and then again in Revelation 13. 
that it, Little Horn is the, the Antichrist. And he has a lot of power. And he takes over the economic system of the world, as well as the political, militarily. And he'll have his spiritual guide, the false prophet. We are, the technologies to do this is here. Now you have to, you have to change the mentality. And what they're doing now with the mask, and I understand we're going to, you know, COVID. I'm not saying COVID's not a, a threat. I think it is, but I think it was planned. I think it was planted by China. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's causing confusion in the world. But it's also changing people's mentality. We are all wearing a mask. Whether you want to or not, we're accepting this system. And once they see they can make people do what they want, they can make it easier for them to change to a new system that would be the mark of the beast. And I have some old books that talk about the, the uh, Illuminati, talk about dividing the world into 10 sections, taking seven continents and dividing it into 10 sections. Um, Revelation says that there's seven heads with 10 horns. So it's, it's as if they're taking, it's as if this plan to bring about the beast kingdom is being, has been, and is being worked on right now. It's coming, coming very, very close. It's all coming together simultaneously. Peace, war, the beast, the great falling away, the, um, the end time revival. It's all happening. It's like unbelievably absolutely accelerating we're we're in the end times pastor when you came on the scene in uh, roughly 2012 you know you really made a hard impact um especially on the christian community but really in general and it's funny to watch as you've been talking to us collectively over the internet and all of the workshops and televangelist stuff that you do um it's really funny to see how right you've been proven time and time again so i just want to say from me to you, thank you so much for what you've been doing, sir, and um, please keep up all of the great work. It's much appreciated. I appreciate that very much, and it was a pleasure to be with you, and uh, keep doing a good job. You're doing a great job. Thank you. you. Got I appreciate a, you, got good, you. got a good feel for this thing, so keep going. I'm, I'm Absolutely. proud of you. Sir. Thank you. Now, um, just before I let you go, I want to make sure, are you still doing these events coming up? Um, 925, you got Igniting the Fire, the virtual conference, and then 1018, the uh, Solid Rock Church with Pastor Bigley. And then, of course, the really the thing we're all waiting for is 11.5, Hear the Watchmen. Yeah, I'm doing all of those. And, uh, and I got one more, Throw in the Deep State webinar, which is going to be October 30th and 31st. Um, you, you might want to check that out where we're going to be uncovering the deep state with some several speakers. But, yeah, I'm doing all those events. I appreciate you bringing those up. Very yeah, good. absolutely. I'll, um, I'll be looking forward to especially for the deep state one myself. So, Pastor, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it, sir. All right. Are you serious? Take it easy, Will. Take it easy. <laughs>